Alrighty then. So we got the basics for actually building your structures. We have an idea how the JSON uh, format works. Now we can finally go into the actual files which make up the entire structure. So a lot of this is done through data packs, though it is possible, like I said, uh, which we'll cover later on how to convert it into a mod for Forge. Uh, it shouldn't be too much different for other platforms like NeoForge or whatever, but uh, we'll be covering how to set it all up. So let's go ahead and just open up the main directory that I have for the actual thing. Uh, in here, what I have is the data pack. And everything in this folder here, minus the notes, uh, is basically what creates the data pack folder. So include the, basically, if I just remove this, these are the files that create the data pack. You'd basically go create, send to, and compress zip file, and then you have your data pack. In the pack MC meta, this value is going to change a little bit. Um, at the moment, uh, for the current version of data packs, it's on pack format 15. Uh, this number changes quite often. Mojang keeps updating it and it's not uncommon for them to increase the number by a value each update or something like that. Uh, this is basically the description of your actual pack. So basically whatever you want to put in here, you can basically put between the two quotations for your string. Um, for this number, uh, if we go to the wiki page, they have a list of numbers. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So searching up pack format, so pack, and it should come up with, um, pack format down at the bottom. If it's not, then just type format after, and it should bring you to the page. So here you can see all the different numbers for resource packs, uh, for resource pack formats, and then down here are the ones for data pack formats. Uh, these are the ones that you're gonna need for your data pack format. So basically, um, I think we're up to like 26 now for 1.20.3 pre-release. So at the moment, what we're currently using, and I got this value from the uh, Minecraft, Amp creator uh, basically generates a pack when you create your mod. So basically I just inherited this file. So it'd work with that version. Uh, to do that, you just export your mod and then you open it up like you would with a jar file. You would need a archive program like 7-zip. I can probably demonstrate this really quickly uh, by exporting. So I'll do that really quickly and get a jar file for it. All right. So in mcritter, what you would want to do is press on the little uh, export button. It's like a page with a arrow uh, white arrow. Uh, you can also go to build. I think it's build. Um, tools, resources. All right. So it's under workspace and then export the mod for distribution. So that's the one that you would want to do. And you would click on that and then it would basically generate the jar file. So we'll save this to our desktop and it might take a couple seconds. So it'll ask you if you want to donate and everything like that. But, um, we don't have that much in our jar itself, so we can always just export mod and then we'll just give it like a generic name so we know what it's called and we'll just call it one. And then it should be on our desktop. Now, if you're opening up the Minecraft jar, you'll be familiar with this uh, to get the resources from the game. Uh, but in case you don't know, you can do this with mods as well. So you can go basically with open with 7-zip, open archive and then you should have something that looks like this and then your pack meta is going to be right here so basically you can create grab this and bring it over into your data pack folder which should have a data folder in it as you can see here uh, there are the assets folder and the data pack folder and both of these consist of your root directories and stuff like that so you can see that all the loot tables that i have for the thing are already set up in this directory type under test so it's already set up that way and for assets i just have language for um i'm not sure if there's any actual 
languages in this mod so that would be interesting to find out anyhow uh that's basically how you set up that part so inside your data pack uh what you want is your namespace so your namespace is going to be unique to your mod or your data pack you don't want it to overlap with other existing ones so make sure to call it something unique and then you have your structure for all your things so there's many components that make up this part i'm going to try to get uh, explain it step by step but it will take a little while to do so hang in with me uh, first thing your loot tables these go under your loot table this is your main directory for your loot tables it's on loot table underscore tables or loot underscore tables and then in here is your subfolders now this particular directory supports subfolders so in our case we put it under chests and that's where all our loot tables are for this particular village so that's where those ones are you can put extra things you could go chest villages or whatever you want to call it and then have them in another folder if you really wanted to but just remember every time that you add that you need to set up the loot table path for your chests to direct to that loot table path so in a, if i change the loot table path in here all those chests that I already saved in my structures won't work because they're not going to be located in this particular folder. So to keep that in mind when you're changing things around in here. Uh, structures, this is pretty straightforward. This is where you're going to be putting them all. Um, this supports subfolders as well. So you can put, uh, in my case, I put them in towns and then there's planes and then there's a whole bunch of other folders. This is where the town center is. And then... I basically put streets down, base, and those are all the different types of rotations. Uh, terminators are in their own folder. And I've set this all up through the pools, which are really important. We'll cover that in a little, little bit. And then monuments, there's bases, the different monument structures, and trees for those monuments, depending on which one you, what one it generates. Houses are all the different types of houses I built. And then decor has everything from ceramics to lamp posts, and we have path decor, which um, has some animal um, storage, and then path decor versions. Those are connected to the decor paths, and then we have small plants for the town center, and we have warehouse objects. So those are all the different decor ones. And then we have, uh, let's see here, villagers. And those are the different types of ones. I have a example workspace set up. So with all the parts that, I, that make up this particular part, and you can actually find that under the, what was it? The world saves. And then in here you can see the template world. And then I basically just included the world for you to kind of um, experiment, look around. There's some command blocks set up and all that other stuff, so it's easy to figure out. All right, so that's basically the structures. That's where your structures go. You can put them in pretty much any folder, but you will have to link them up to your pools. So keep that in mind when you actually set up your structure because you'll have to figure out where you're gonna be structuring things. Tags we'll get into a little bit. Let's take a look at the world gen folder. In here, there are three folders. There's actually a fourth one. But I didn't use the fourth one because uh, it has to do with, what was it, the, um, let me just open up the Minecraft directory, assets, data, Minecraft, world gen, um, processor lists. So this is a little bit different, like I said, um, more advanced, not required. Um, but it does allow you to do a lot more things with structures, but it's like really advanced. Like you have to kind of know how they all work and stuff. So I'm not do not covering this in today's tutorial because it's already going to be pretty long to actually cover this. Uh, I will say that they do not support subdirectories. As you can see here, they're all just kind of filled into this one folder. So you'll have to actually add them to the main folder if you're going to add them. And then I will cover, however, where to set these up. So uh, hang in and I will explain how to link those files. So let's go into our first main thing that runs this entire uh, structure and that's going to be your structure set. So then this one here, uh, if we go into the structure set, you can see it doesn't support subdirectories. So again, you're gonna have to put 
um, all your different stu structure sets into this particular one. A best way to explain this is it's going to be a group of structures in the same class. So if we look at the village one, you can see how they basically structured it. So in here we have a um, array and then in here we have different structure types. So it's basically like classifying each structure generation to a certain type in a main file. Now in here you also might notice there is a salt. Um, not entirely sure what this has to do with. I think it has to do with like seed generation. Uh, you can always change this a little bit. It's probably best to change it a little bit as well. You have the separation, which is basically how far apart the, um, I think they can be from each other and the spacing. So how far they actually need to be. I think that's how it works. I'm not sure. So this would be the distance, how they need to be far. And then there's like a buffer zone or something like that between the the two villages. I think that's how it works. I can't really understand it. Uh, there is a wiki page if you want to look it up. And then basically this you don't really want to mess around with. I'm not sure what it does, but I haven't really touched it and it works just fine. And then down here you have again your structure pool. This points to your structure actual file. Uh, this is a separate file under world gen. And then if we go to structures, and then you can see that there's different village ones based on the type of village. So again, we can confirm this with these files here. So we have the village planes and you can see village planes is right here. Uh, village desert. So desert is up here, village savanna, and you get the idea. So inside these folders what, or files, what we have is we'll just take a look at the planes one. This one has some different properties in here that are uh, basically control a whole bunch of stuff. So the biomes, this uses a tag. Now this is where I'm going to have to explain the tag. A tag is identified by the pound sign and then the namespace of that tag. So it would be in the same folder for your mod. And then it's basically put under a subdirectory. So in this case, I have it under, or Minecraft has it under, has structures, and then the type of tag name. So you can do the same if you want to, or just keep it in the main folder, however you want. You probably won't need to separate it too much uh, because you won't have as many structures. But if you do, then, I mean, it might be a good idea to do something similar. Uh, this basically indicates what kind of structure type it is. You probably don't want to mess around with that. It's probably required for the jigsaw in order to do it. So make sure that it keeps this the same. And then maximum distance from center. So basically this has to do with, um, I think, how far the structure can actually generate. Um, I can't really remember. It's been a while since I've like worked on this. So... Uh, and I think it only goes up to 128 for the size, but running it at 120 to 128, it actually had some problems. So you probably want to keep it at or below uh, 80 for like this kind of thing. And then the size, this is basically, I think has to do with the, um, the distance, like how many times the jigsaw blocks can basically generate. So basically from, I think it's like six for villages, but in the case it might support seven, unless it's counting zero as one. So I'm not sure how this actually works, but um, you can always go onto the Minecraft wiki. There's a wiki page for all of these things. I'll make sure to include that in the notes. Um, I'll just add the notes file back and you can have, have it. So start height, um, played around with this a little bit, not sure what it does. I noticed that when I set it to a higher or lower number, it will actually um, put it underground, which is really weird. But um, in most cases, you probably just want to leave this the same for villages. And then we have the start pool. So this is the base structure for the file that is going to be generated for your from your pools list. So in this case, I created a, um, well, Minecraft created a namespace for their pool. It's under a village folder and then planes folder 
and then the file is called town centers. So this is where all their different types of town centers is going to be linked to. And uh, step, this is surface structures. I think this has to do with the generation type. So basically surface structures is basically where it's going to be generating. So you want to set it up the way that it is. Uh, bare thin, this has to do with terrain adaption. I'm not sure. I haven't played with it too much. There's a few different settings. You can find it on the wiki page as well. Use expansion uh, hack. I don't know what this actually does, but only villages use it, as far as I can tell. So you can leave that enabled if you really want to. So let's take a look at the pools now. Pools are a little bit different. If we go into template pools, and then you can see that we have a subdirectory system. So Minecraft has an empty one. Uh, this basically allows you to just call empty things. It doesn't really count as anything. Um, it won't generate any structures. It's like a fallback thing that they use in their um, their template pools. So if we look at villages, so this is the subdirectory. Now again, if we look at that particular one, we can see that it's under village, plains, town center. So we can find that village plains and then our town center is right here. So we can open that up and then we have a array and then array objects and we have a weight. So I'll cover all the different elements here. These are, this is actually the easiest folder file to actually work with. You'll be working with them quite a lot. So it's actually very fortunate that you can work with them like this. This is actually the best one to actually explain too, because it has um, processors in it already set up, so we can cover all that. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, ray, and then we have our object, and then we have a basically an object, an actual object. It's called elements or element, and then we have element type. So the element type has to do with. I, think the way that it's going to generate in general you don't want to mess around with this too much I just left it all the same when I was doing my testing and it worked just fine uh, location this is where you're going to be setting up your structure uh, path so basically wherever your path is for your actual structure you're going to want to locate that so in this case uh, there you have the town centers under uh, the Minecraft namespace village plains town centers plains fountain underscore one so plains fountain underscore one is the name of the file in the town centers path or folder in the plains folder path or folder and then under the village folder itself under the minecraft namespace if that makes sense and then for your processors this is very similar to how um linking up to the processor itself. So if you're going to run a processor, then what you can do is you can basically set your namespace and then target the exact file that you want. Now remember, processors, um, if we open up the file, don't support, um, don't support subdirectories. So as you can see here, they, there's no subdirectories in here. So you're going to have to make sure that they are in the same folder. That's why they're not doing subfolders like they are doing with these structures. So make sure to name your processors if you use them um, to something that will actually be identifiable, but still different from the rest. Um, if you don't want to use a processor, that's fine. Uh, you can just basically use this kind of code right here, which is the processor. Uh, it gives it a object and then it puts a single processors um, array in here uh, and it's empty. So basically an empty array won't do anything and it just has like the closing brackets and that will basically say no processor. And rigid. So rigid, uh, there's actually two different types of uh, systems as far as I know. There might be more. I don't know. Uh, but rigid basically means it's going to flatten the terrain. So basically I'll make sure that the train and all the components in the structure itself will be flat and match the train. So this is really important for your uh, base structure. The only time that you need to use something that isn't like this is basically when you create. So if we go to 
template pools and then I need to figure out where the paths are located so village we'll just go under planes and it should be streets yeah streets so the only other time that you will need it is when you're working with your streets and it'll be called train matching and basically what that will do is it will follow the train village very similar to the dirt or grass path dirt paths I don't know they changed the name of it uh, but it's basically how they have that set up and then they've actually added um, street lamps as separate structures so that it will not match the train but rather than it will be placed on top of the train so keep that in mind when you're actually generating your lamps and stuff like that because I messed around with it and actually put it on to the actual street itself and it made it look really terrible so make sure not to put anything that you want to not follow the train on your pass when you're using this variable and that's pretty much it the only other thing that i need to cover is um the one thing that will actually get your structures to generate and i need to figure out where it is uh where is the folder there we go all right so if you go back to your main, uh, if you go back to the Minecraft thing, you will notice that there is tags. And then if we go under world gen and then world preset, or wait, no, not world presets. Is that one? World presets? No, that's not it. Uh, structure. Oh, I might have went under the, oh, biomes. That's right. You want to go under biomes and then has structure so this is where all the different structures are basically being told where they can generate um this is going to be where the biomes that you can basically set in your i believe it was this one right here the um structures file so the structures JSON file, it has that pound sign. Remember we talked about that? It says biomes here. And then you have your namespace. So basically, this is basically saying has structure. So in our case, their root directory is located in the biomes folder. So this is where you're going to basically have your, your target for your biomes. So it's under the Minecraft namespace and then just shift all the tag stuff over to the biomes because that's where it's starting the test from so you need to make sure that it's at least in the biome directory structure that it's already set up in and then it's under a subdirectory called has structure so in, in that case if we look here has structures this is the main directory for biome tags and then our village tag is located here so as you can see we villages only support plains and meadows so you can add your own biomes there or whatever and to do this in m creator all you need to do is you need to go to your workspace create thing create tag we'll just call it something like this we can you would want to be more specific with it but um i don't know biomes we'll just call it village and then what you would want is to put a has structure can't spell today and i don't know if there's an s at it behind it but basically this is the path that you would want to do and then you would want to put it under your mod namespace because that's where you're going to be putting it for all your data pack and stuff and then you can go under biomes and that's going to already target the biomes folder so if we look in the biomes folder this is going to be where the biome tags are going to be stored so we can actually save this uh, we'll just put something under here quickly like i don't know ocean and just so there's something there and then we can go ahead and open up our workspace folder i uh, don't think i pressed the right one open workspace folder and then go to our source main resources data test tags world gen biome has structures and then we have our village so basically you can see this is the same thing now if you're coding it by hand you probably don't need this i don't know what that part actually supports so you might want to adjust it a little bit but this is basically how you can get the tags for the biomes you don't really need to 
tweak it too much. You can just end up turning it so it works with this system, which is basically just how Minecraft does it. So I don't know why there's a replace feature. I think that might be Forge related. So just make sure that it's the same as the vanilla one. You might want to lock the tag itself if you can and lock it and then change it to how you want. So in our case, we would put uh, remove that value right there and that should be good for what we need. So that's basically it. Um, all the components, uh, processor list, basically what processors, I'll cover this just really quickly. Um, processors allow you to replace certain blocks in the structure. So in some cases, you could basically replace um, certain blocks with uh, error or different things. Uh, Minecraft does this with villages for zomb zombified villages, which uh, replaces some blocks with um, different types of blocks like glass or um, I think it's brown glass per, for the windows and then there's cobwebs that are placed and doors and windows are removed. So there's a whole bunch of different components that make up the actual thing. Uh, when it comes to crops, uh, all villages basically generate random crops from wheat and basically it replaces the crops based on the wheat but it goes through a processor list and then it replaces it into an overall um, uh, like a, a randomized uh, crop from that particular one. So there's a, definitely uses for it. Like I said, if you want a tutorial on that, I can kind of give a base understanding of how it works, um, but it's not too much different than the other ones. So hopefully this helped you. I know it's a little bit of a longer video. I was hoping for it to be a little bit shorter, but there's a lot of stuff that... Um, was built into it so <laughs> sorry for the long video and uh hopefully you learned something from it and when you're actually actually there's one more things that i should probably cover so when you make your data pack uh we'll go into the data pack folder make sure to copy both of these from the root directory like this file don't just copy it from the out file out here or it won't work go into here and then go send to press zip file and then this will be the proper structure for your data pack if we open it up you can see this is in the root directory for that zip file that's important for when uh, the game reads the files so that's really important for making your data packs oh and if you want to actually add this to your mod um, this can be done by adding the files from here from your data to your Minecraft workspace. So we'll go to the Minecraft workspace, source, main, re resources, data. So everything in the data folder, put it under your mod namespace. And then if we go into here, test, and then you would basically place all these things that make up your mod. So mainly the world gen, your tags will probably be already done through. M creator, but you can not use tags and just copy them over if you really wanted to and your structures so all that goes into the same namespace folder so in this case right here and then it will basically act as a mod rather than ad to pack so hopefully that makes sense um i'll that if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out